Ryan Burns and Keller Christ, uh, that was the QB competition heading into 2016 for the Stanford Cardinal. Different situation coming into 2017, although both players involved. Don King from Last Word on College Football here to break down the Stanford Cardinal quarterback situation after a fine 10 and 3 campaign. So, Don, uh, obviously, Keller Christ took command of the job down the stretch, the back half of the season. Uh, unfortunately, he's suffering from a knee injury that's pretty critical. Yep, look, looked quite serious. And, you know, Stanford, uh, Coach Shaw is not terribly forthcoming with details on, uh, on injuries like that one, but it looked like a significant uh, surgery requiring ligament injury and uh, he's certainly out for spring ball um i think he is expected to participate in fall camp at some point will he be 100 percent? that's not that clear yet if he is 100 percent, shaw has already said that he will indeed be the starter for the opener in australia against rice um but it's just a matter of uh how that that rehab progresses for him um chris uh you know, was nosed out of the quarterback competition in fall camp last year by Ryan Burns, who started like a house of fire in the, in the season opener, um, notched a couple of other key wins uh, at UCLA, at Notre Dame, um, but, you know, struggled at Washington, struggled at home against Washington State, struggled mightily at home against Colorado, um, and Chris took over, and all he did was go 6-0 and the rest of the season and, and nail down another double-digit win season. Uh, for the eventual number 12 team in the nation at the end of the year. So uh, Shaw has said, and it's hard for most of us to disagree, you know, if, if Chris is healthy, if he can go, he's kind of earned the right to start the season as a starter. Um, we'll see how that goes, though. You know, everybody's body is different, and the severity of injuries, you know, change as well. Uh, we'll have to see how he rehabs. Um, but for the spring, it's going to be Ryan Burns, who was, you know, there, there was – thought that he was going to transfer out, but he's chosen to stay and come back for his fifth year. Um, it'll be Burns and it'll be KJ Costello, and they're the only two scholarship quarterbacks currently on the roster. So Costello redshirted this past year. Uh, we haven't seen him yet, really, uh, but we'll see what he's got in the spring game here in, in, in a few weeks. Yeah, I think back to that opening Friday night game against Kansas State at home. Uh, the first couple passes were very safe to get Burns comfortable. Then the, he cut it loose on a number of throws. Looked very impressive. 14 of 18 with a touchdown in that game. And then inexplicably regressed after a decent outing the next week. And you mentioned the three-game losing streak. And, and obviously a lot of other things were involved there. But Ryan Burns did not play well. Keller Chris did. Didn't hint for a high percentage of completion at 56%. But the TD-to-pick ratio, mighty impressive at 10-to-2. So can you compare and contrast uh, the styles of play between these two? Yeah, it's really fascinating because candidly, they, they look off the bus, they look like the same dude. They're the same size. They both have good size to them. They're both physical, don't mind hitting somebody, good runners, um, great arm strength on both of them. Uh, it, it's just uh, they they have presented a little differently. And, and to be fair to Burns, Chris had the advantage of playing against a spate of weaker defenses, generally speaking, uh, in his six starts down the stretch. Um, and also, to be fair to Burns, he did come in, you know, in relief and get that win in the Sun Bowl game that we talked about earlier. So, you know, it, it, he, he has had some moments, um, but, you know, Chris seems to, the team and the offense has seemed to work better when Chris is under center. I got to tell you, Don, let's assume that Chris is healthy and he's the starter and Burns is the backup. And there's no question about who is going to get the number one job. This quarterback situation uh, too deep is one of the better situations in the country. I, I do these previews all the time, and because these kids are only around three to four years, and because the backup's a backup for a reason, the starter has been playing very few situations across the country does the backup have significant playing time against quality competition. That is very true. It's actually it, it's a bit of a luxury. I have to tell you, if Chris had stayed 100% healthy through the Sun Bowl, I'm not sure Burns would have come back. Um, but I think he sees an opportunity to perhaps, you know, start again and, and play well and, um, you know, put some put some film out there that might encourage a team at the next level even to take a look. He's certainly got all the measurables, as does Chris. Um, and he may get another shot to, to kind of be the guy, at least for a little while, uh, should, should Chris' rehabilitation uh, linger on a little bit. 
Um, a lot of folks appear to be really excited about KJ Costello. Again, you know, great high school talent. We haven't seen him much as he redshirted last year. And, and you know, Shaw is very shy about, you know, giving anybody the keys to the Mercedes during their, their true freshman season. You know, even, even Andrew Luck redshirted. So that'll just tell you kind of how complicated the Harbaugh slash Shaw playbook is. It, it's, it's hard to get on top of that thing uh, in a short period of time. But Costello apparently is a really talented kid. We're going to see what he's got in the spring, and, and he may insert himself into that mix as well. All right, so plan A is tentative. It involves Keller Christ getting healthy, getting set for the Rice opener. But, uh, of course, Ryan Burns needs to be ready, and there is no doubt about uh, that. Yeah, now one last thing to add. Uh, Stanford also added the number one pocket passer in the nation uh, in the uh, 2017 recruiting class, and Davis Mills out of, uh, out of Georgia. Um, so he he'll, he plans to carry the clipboard, I'm sure, for, for most of next season, particularly given that glut, you know, at one, two, and three. Um, but I, I got to tell you, just watching some of the and, – and by the way, he had a bit of an injury as well coming out of the, the, his high school senior season. So not sure he'll be 100% healthy, but it'll be a good time for him to get some mental reps and learn behind some guys who are – you know, pretty good and have a history of playing at a fairly high level. And, uh, you know, the bench is pretty deep. It's it's a good place to be. Don, you caught me just in time. Oh, yeah, that Mills kid. Yeah, the number one quarterback in the country. I, yeah. I wasn't going to mention him, but uh, not only the number one quarterback in the country, but we're talking about Georgia, a rich state in talent, probably only trumped by Florida, California, and Texas. That's and right. he's the number one overall player in the state, regardless of position out of Georgia. So the quarterback situation at Stanford, sure, Keller Christ needs to be the starter and fans would like him to be the starter this fall, but it's um, a situation unlike others where the backup has experience and then you've got the stud waiting in the wings. Absolutely. Right. Looks good. Yeah. Don King from Last Word on College Football breaking down Stanford's wealth at quarterback. Thanks, Mark.